That's right. We're on live. We're going to get this thing done one way or another. What's up to y'all? As we segue to great things that people have done, we're going to talk about what you are doing and what you have done in the past. So, with that being said, I'm gonna I'm chill for a minute well, and let you. I'm, I'm gonna let you take. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let you take over the show a little bit and talk about what you do. Okay, go ahead. Um, we have um, a walk. The top, the topmost point of Great Britain is John O'Groats, and the southernmost point is Lands End in Cornwall, uh, and they're about. Depending on which way you go, if you go by road, about 900 miles apart. But if you walk it, it's about 1,000 miles apart, which is... Um, mm. So, um, people in the past, uh, there is a club, an exclusive club of people who've walked it. So, people have walked it, people have cycled it. One person's actually swum it. And I thought, well, uh, as a legally blind man, I'd like to um, walk it and get sponsored and raise money for the RNIB, which, which is what I'm doing. So, I'm going to set off next week. From the top bit in Scotland, and um, I walk all the way down to the surf capital of Europe, which is uh, Cornwall. Uh, it takes me about two months. Uh, people say, "Well, how, how, how do you do that if you can't see?" Well, I can still see a little bit, so I want to do it while I can still see a little bit because eventually it will all go. Uh, uh, and walking's easy. You just, well, I just say, "Yeah, well, I just put one foot in front of the other and head vaguely in the right direction," you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's mm -hmm. not difficult. Mm -hmm. It's not difficult, is it? But I've mm -hmm. met so many inspiring blind people who are totally blind. I've met people who do marathon running, people who climb mountains, uh, uh, and you know, blindness should not be a barrier. I, I, I think when these things happen to us, um, we, we become a little bit more. We got to go two ways: we either lapse into depression, or we become a little bit more driven. And I've met so many blind people who do wonderful things that fully sighted people never do. And, um, and they've inspired me. Okay, let, let me uh, let you take a breath right quick. And uh, I want to ask you about a little bit about the organization that you are trying to raise money for. Give them the, yeah. the acronym for, uh, we'll give them the letters and then what it stands for and everything again so they'll know. So that's, that's the RNIB, which is the... Um, Royal National Institute for the Blind. It has that title because it has the Queen's patronage as well. Um, uh, and they're like the premier blind organization in this country. They've been, probably been going 100, 150 years. And, and, and what do they serve and what do they do? What do they do? Um, they run courses for blind people. They do, they do educational courses. Um, they're a centre for lobbying for more rights for blind people that particular area of disability and they also support this is the thing it's not just a case of not seeing they also help support people's mental health as well um because people don't realize it's not just a physical health defect but when people go blind or they can't do stuff that affects their mental health and, uh, and they're very supportive and they can give legal advice, refer people to social services, all that kind of thing. They're a central point of contact. They're, a, they're, a, they're not just a knowledge bank, they're a practical health bank as well. Uh, okay, and why did, you why did you choose that particular uh, organization to raise money? Because they're the people who helped me. Okay. Uh, so you want to give people, sort of give back? People, yeah, so you give something back because it is a charity. I mean, it costs money to help people, and um, you know we don't want the well to run dry. And it's also nice that I can put something back so that they can help the next person come along. That's very more remarkable. Uh, so tell the people again uh, a little bit more uh, about when it starts. What do you plan to do on your 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 uh, your journey? Or, you know, what, what 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 do you think is going? Tell us what's going to take place. You know, well, you're gonna... Okay, well, I start working on the 21st of May. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, um, you'll be, I'll, be able to, I'll be doing daily video things of what I'm doing. Um, I think the RNIB are going to broadcast it. I'm going to broadcast it on YouTube as well and on my Facebook page of Great. what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Basically, um, 
I'm going to try and camp as much as I can. In theory, blind people can't camp, but you know, yes, we can. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, and I'm actually going to meet up with people on the way down. Some people who, who I haven't seen for 40 years, because it's amazing. Because when it went out, I was doing it. Other people who I, I used to know, I lost contact, picked it up and said, oh, when we said, hello, Richard, how are you? Long time no see. We'd like to come and walk a little bit with you, um, catch up on old times, have a few beers, you know, uh, mm. uh, all that kind of thing. So it, it, that, that's been rather lovely. So I, I'm going to walk about 20 miles a day. Um, if I spend a night in the pub, maybe a bit less with a hangover. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's no set plan because these things you can't plan. I mean, you, you must, I think people must realize that if, if you can't see very much, you tend to fall down holes, twist your ankle, walk into trees. Well, I do anyway. And, um, and uh, so I'm looking at about two months to do what we call it the end, end to end. Um, okay. But I'm treating it more as an adventure and a bit of fun. It's not a strict. Everyone seems to be saying, "Oh, you've got to have a plan. You've got to be centre by centre." Day. I'm saying, "No, no, no, no plans." We just the only plan is I start at point A, and as long as I get to point B, it doesn't really matter. That's right. I'm a week out, a few days out, whatever. It's having a good time over the two months, raising money, making people aware of blindness and also making people aware that blind people can do stuff yeah we're, yep, we're, i like that yeah that's the most important thing and as i said to you next year if this works well i want to um walk across america do uh, new york to san francisco uh which okay. take, take about six months you know um the new the new forest gump I'm growing my beard already. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, look, have you, I have a few questions for you. <clears throat> have you ever done some something like this before as far as uh, walk? Uh, oh, long uh, distance walks, yeah. Long distance. Um, when I was in my early 20s, I, I, I did um, quite a bit of walking, actually. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to name the areas because they won't be familiar to your audience. But I used to do quite a bit of walking on, uh, in the hills. Hiking since become a lot more popular. And also, I had one of those fathers whose idea of fun was to, on Sunday morning was to make me more to the top of a mountain um, before I to cook my breakfast, which I didn't particularly enjoy. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but there you go, that's parents for you. Um, so I did a lot younger. And then recently, I've been doing twice, we have a pilgrimage, which goes from London to Canterbury, um, which is the old pilgrim's route. Uh, Canterbury is the centre of our Christian centre. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and that's uh, 74 miles over four days. So I, I, I've done that a couple of times. Okay. Uh, and that's that's very good fun because we walk through all the villages and it's become such a tradition that we have these villages called, and they have what was called women's institutes. Um, and uh, <laughs> I've always got to be careful because of political correctness because mm -hmm. it all sounds very sexist, but at one time women stayed at home and didn't go to work, so they used to spend their time baking cakes and looking after children. Anyway, the Women's Institutes are still going and they're still community organisations, whatever their title is, although they admit men now. And uh, you walk to Canterbury, and because it's such a tradition, they turn out in the village halls with cakes and sandwiches right, and, right. Uh, and everything. So what you're doing is you're going from village to village and just have a feast in every village. And when I walk 74 miles, along with about 100 other people, um, they... Um, I actually managed to put on weight. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. <laughs> well, you you able you probably were able to walk it off toward the end, but I can imagine all those cakes and pies. But I, I want to ask you: uh, Are you taking this walk as a blind or with vision impaired person? Are you taking this walk alone, or are you going to have some uh, C and I dog, or you have some people with you? What, what who's, who's going to accompany you on this trip? Well, well, no, I, I can still see a bit from my right eye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm a, I mean, the whole idea is that blind people can be independent. I'm very independent, very mm -hmm. independent, fiercely independent, yeah? I had people offer to come along as a carer. Well, I don't need a carer. I'm quite capable of looking after mm -hmm. myself. Um, as I said, various people, friends and things like that are going to walk bits with me, but there will be bits that I'll be walking on my own. Mm -hmm. um, and I have something like 20%. I have no vision in my left eye. Mm -hmm. and I have 
20% vision in my right eye, which is a bit like looking through a periscope or a tube. And um, if I'm on a good surface, I, I, uh, you know, I can get along okay. You know, <laughs> so uh, you know, I, I want I want to maintain maintain because once you start becoming dependent on people, on things, I have my white cane. I'm happy with that. Once you start becoming dependent on people, you it's very difficult to go back. Um, That's true. I, I'm entitled to a guide dog, but I don't want a guide dog at the moment because if I get a guide dog, I become dependent on the guide dog. But you are going to use your cane, though, right? Uh, I'm going to use a cane. I've actually got a... Um, <laughs> I'm not going to show you because it's a blind thing, isn't it? What I've done is I've gone to the local um, DIY store, yeah? Mm -hmm. And you know these caster wheels you get on the bottom of furniture? Right. Yeah? I'm going to... I've got some Gorilla tape, and I'm going to stick the wheel on the bottom of a white cane, yeah? Mm -hmm. and, and so as I'm walking along the road... Just roll like around. Uh, on the thing you see, I mean, I'm not going to go down tapping for a thousand miles. Right, gonna, right, I'm right. I'm going to wear me cane out. And those ball things are bloody stupid because the end ball then goes from side to side. Yeah, so mm. I just stick a little wheel on the end, put mm. my cane on the surface, and run it along like a measuring wheel. It's really easy. Exactly. Right? That's smart. Yeah, yeah no, it's cool. That's smart. Well, okay. So, um, I know you had to make preparations because you're going to be gone for two months to, uh, to, to, to do this, right? You had to make a lot of preparations as far as um, places like mapped anything out in terms of where you're going to stay or where you're going to eat or are you just, just taking a trip blindly? No part, part, part. I, 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 I've been making preparations because obviously um, I'm going to consume a lot of calories while I'm walking. So one of the preparations I've been making is I've been... Um, eating a bit more so uh, i've had lots of uh, fried chicken and fries <laughs> mm -hmm. okay your bad pizza and as you can probably see from my double chin i put a bit of weight on but you see that i lose all that um, <laughs> definitely yeah that's definitely that's my excuse um, well i'm 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 excited about that like i said i definitely want to get it get get in touch with you and and, and uh allow you a chance to to um talk about this so as i conclude i want to thank uh richard for coming on and talking about this man wishing the best of luck man this is, this is a remarkable feat that he's about to partake he is prepared he's a very jolly fun loving guy man y'all definitely need to meet him <laughs> and, and 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 follow him when he takes his uh journey uh to raise money a two month two month journey. So with that being said, my name is Anthony Park. I want to thank you all for viewing um, Third Eye Visions. And if y'all want to contact Richard, his name, his uh, his his um, links will be in the description.